Hello everyone and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of Alteryx Inspire. We are wrapping up one day of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, sitting alongside my co-host and analyst, Rob Strecce. It has been a day and we have really heard so many great stories and had great conversations. I, I, I'm so excited because everybody around us is so excited. The partners that uh, from all shapes and sizes, from the SIs to the integrators to all of the uh, people who are working with the customers to even the clouds and technology partners that are here as well. It's been such an inspiring day, wrapped up with the fact that the customers are so excited. And I, I think it is about the customers and Alteryx has been about the customers and that always just, comes through in everybody we've talked to today. Well, exactly, and who better to be our last guest of the day. I'd like to introduce Paula Hansen. She is the President and Chief Revenue Officer of Alteryx. Welcome, Paula. Thank you, thrilled to be here. And Cliff Kim, he is the Vice President, Strategy, Growth and Analytics at Fender Musical Instruments. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Welcome to both of you. Thank yeah. you, we're thrilled really to be exciting. here. Yeah, so Cliff, you don't come to conferences a lot. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't been in five years. I mean, yes, there was a pandemic, but yeah. but we got to know, why, why did you choose Alteryx Inspire? Well, the first reason is I had two sweet boys, Logan and Noah, Aww. my two sweet boys. Congratulations. It's hard to take time away from them, so. But the second thing is we're going through this data transformation, this evolution at Fender, and we are, big fans of Alteryx. I, it pains me to say it because I play coy with every single vendor. <laughs> <laughs> I lost all my negotiating power right now, but we really truly are big fans. And you know, just in the conversations we've had here, you know, everything came to fruition where we are all going through this transformation together, centered around AI, centered around the cloud, centered around all of these pieces that we're trying to put together ultimately thinking about the consumer and the customer to move it forward that we're all passionate about. So it's, that's why I'm here. I don't regret it yet. <laughs> I, I, I doubt you'll regret it. I, I, <laughs> and again, as people on the other side of that, almost an empty nester, and we'll get to that in a okay. minute, because <laughs> I, I, you had a really con early, interesting comment leading up to yeah. that yeah. Uh, about my goals when I'm an empty nester. But <laughs> I, I think some of the goals for Alteryx, right? I mean, you start to look at how you're bringing Aiden and AI to analytics. What is it that you're really aiming for with helping customers with AI? Yeah, you bet. Well, thanks for having us. Uh, we're so thrilled to be here and to sit next to a, a rock star oh. and the vendor, right? Pretty special. Appreciate that. Um, so we are all about helping companies unlock the full potential of their data. That's been our mission for 27 years. And with AI now, it's doubling down on the things that people have come to expect from Alteryx. One is ease of use. We do very well with people of a, a range of technical capabilities and AI only helps us make ourselves easier to use, make data easier to use, make analytics, something that everyone can participate in. And then secondly, we're known for quick time to value, helping people drive the most important outcomes with their data, and AI helps you to do that more quickly as well. So uh, it's just you know, something that is more fuel on the, the gas of data that uh, helps our customers to really accelerate the outcomes. So Cliff, rock star Cliff. Hi. Uh, <laughs> oh, keep that up. <laughs> How is Fender using Alteryx products and in analytics to make better decisions and then be more strategic? You know, we're really trying to push music forward. You know, uh, Leo Fender's motto was, artists are angels and it's our job to give them wings to fly. And we've tried to push that even further by filling the world with more angels in the world because we believe music is really healing and it brings people together. And so for us, we see that there's about so many people, there's about 16 million people that are trying to learn guitar. There's so many beginners that come, but there's a 90% fallout rate. People just quit on their dreams and we want them to keep following their dreams. We want to fill the world with music. And for us, the only way to do that is making sure we meet them where they are. And the only way to do that is get as close to them through the data, through what they need, when they need it, at the right time. And all of that is critical, critical to do. And without you know, data and analytics, we can't do that. And so we're putting, marrying those worlds together 
to put more music in the world. Yeah, I, I think again, it, when you're saying things like that, and I don't think you've lost your negotiating power, by the way. <laughs> I, I think you'll be just Thank fine. I, I, think you're, I think you're doing okay. I, I think what does give you negotiating power is helping them with their roadmap. And I, I guess, Paul, how does that really feed into what you look for and when you're talking to Suresh and all yeah. of that and really building out that roadmap to the future? Yeah, you bet. I, I, the, Customer feedback is absolutely paramount. So what Cliff and other customers tell us does directly influence the roadmap and the work that Suresh and team are building into the portfolio on a daily basis. And we're really excited because it's resonating, right? Uh, a big launch today with our co-pilot to make analytics easier to use yet again, uh, even further, and that's you know, being driven by feedback from customers uh, that have convinced us that that's, you know, that's the wave of the future. We've just got to keep lowering the barrier, making it easier, making it possible for data to be democratized, and so we will always take the feedback and, and put that into our development strategy. I'll testify to that, they do listen. <laughs> yeah, and I think that also gives you your power back. Because <laughs> right. right. uh, you're actually helping them build a better product. Be better. And, I, and yeah. I think right. that, was, that was some of the stuff, and by the way, you were a rock star this morning on, yeah. on stage. Thank so you. I, again, it's, it's one of these things that you start to look at everybody who got up on stage and yeah. the DoorDash, you know, going through in the 20, 23,000 hours or something, 25,000 hours, it was, crazy hours. I, I think that to me is one of the things that was really key is that it gives you more time. And it, I'm assuming that's part of why you like Alteryx as well is it gives you more time to help put wings on the angels and <laughs> things of that nature. Yeah, and not just wings on the customers, but also on marketers and product people and finance people. You know, we have a BI tool that prior to using Alteryx, you try to load a screen, it would take a minute and 30 seconds to get the data. That's a long time. Imagine a minute and 30 second pause in a conversation. That is really <laughs> that, awkward. That's about a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then imagine accidentally filtering it when you didn't want to, and then you have to wait another minute and 30 seconds for it to load. With Alteryx, we dropped that down to five seconds. Wow. Literally five seconds. Five seconds that it loads, five seconds that it filters. It's speed, and that gets time back to all these people that make critical decisions for these important customers of ours that we make sure that they get the guitar that they need, the instruments they need, and the, the, the lessons that they need to. So what are the kinds of, of insights that you've been able to extract from your data that then you've been able to take action on and say here is a better way that we can, as you said, meet customers where they are and make sure that that 90% fallout rate comes, comes down? There are so many different types of guitarists. You know, I think one of the things that we've found is there's this cyclical life cycle uh, of a learner. Right? And there are people that start roughly in school, in college, they're like really passionate about it, and then you see a big downfall around 30 years old, and then you see a big rise back up around 55 years old, and you may wonder, why is there a big dip? <laughs> and you could see people have children, people Logan and Noah. Their, yeah, <laughs> Logan and Noah, and, and they just kind of put it aside. And then when they come back with you know, more disposable income, you know, with more time, with more energy, you know, with having learned how to parent, you've gone through that, now you have the perseverance to push through something like guitar, <laughs> right? And that gives you a lot more time. And so we're finding and meeting people at different spots, right? Not just the ones that are at 55 that are ready, but ones that are early on, why did they give up in the first place? You know, ones that are in the drought, like hey, maybe you do have time, Maybe it's only 20 minutes a day that you can learn and you can still do it. But me meeting people at each of their points to hopefully drop that 90% down and bring more creativity into this world that desperately needs it. 
Yeah, I mean, I look at it and go, you know, Hendrix, Beck, uh, Gilmore. <laughs> I, I mean, all people that, you know, I grew up listening to and I failed. I was one of that 90% that put it down and, but I'm about to be in your sweet spot <laughs> of being an empty nester. So I, I'm really excited about that. And when you look at this and, and like you said, you're giving these insights to help people. Again, like you said, the marketing's going out and targeting those folks and giving them more inspiration. Again, Inspire, being here at Altrix Inspire, I love that theme. How do you look at it as, again, it's, it's your, your customers are your internal customers as well as your end user angels and customers in there. How do you look at it as that this data is really shaping their lives? In, in making it easier. You're, you might, are you measuring how many hours you're giving them back in their day, or is it they're coming back to you and saying, hey, you've made this so much easier to me? I think a lot of it is just access, you know, being able to get them things they've never seen before. Just because we're able to crunch so much more with Alteryx in such a small amount of time. And that's really elevated our analysts' output maybe 4x. Like, it's just incredible the amount that we're able to do and the amount that we're able to automate. It's, it's funny because uh, I talk about how um, sometimes ungrateful people are because they tend to forget what it used to be like. But that's what we want because this is the new norm. The new norm is you can use data to make these decisions. And you can complain that, okay, I need more. I want to digest more. I want to have more because these things are really important to making decisions because otherwise we're going to lean on things that are like N equals one, where my own experience <laughs> is going to change the way that an huge entire company runs the business, right? And that's going to affect millions and millions of customers. But people forget that Data oftentimes is actual people telling you something, right? I clicked on this page, I've moved forward one, one bit, I gave you my information so that you can do something with it. Yeah. This yeah. is valuable and you, you got to make it worth it. Wow, so Paula, I mean working, one thing that's so evident being here at Inspire and having the conversations that we're having is how close Alteryx is when it works with customers and, and really is listening to that feedback. And as you said, they make you better. They make yeah. your products more refined. Yeah. So can you describe that process to us a little bit in terms of working with Cliff and saying, okay, what do you need? What can we do here? How, how do yeah. we make this better? Yeah, you bet. Well, it, it all starts with understanding their business, right? What is it that they're trying to accomplish? What's their mission? Where are the opportunities for unlock, for driving value? Which generally means use cases. What are the use cases? that a finance department wants to close their books more quickly, a marketing department wants to measure the return on the investments they make to find their customers supply chain to make sure that they're optimizing their logistics spend. Understanding those use cases is the first thing that we do. So we have blueprints that we use to engage with customers to say where are your pain points, where are the places that we should really partner first to unlock the value of the data. And then as they go through the journey, partnering with them on training potential users, ideating on new use cases, um, adopting the full capability within the platform. So we have uh, a customer experience team that's incredibly focused on that process after investments are made. We have a rich uh, partner ecosystem you referenced uh, at the beginning that's also there to help our customers with value realization. It's all about making sure that whatever problem's trying to be solved, whatever value's trying to be unlocked, that we're lockstep with our customers to help make that happen. Yeah. And, and Cl I, Cliff, I imagine that it had to be also the power of Alteryx to gain the trust of the people that you're working with because there's the governance, data quality, and being able to connect that all together. That has to be part of it about bringing them in where they see you as a resource in providing that data. Yeah, that's actually uh, something that we discussed at the executive summit right before. Um, it is complicated sometimes with Alteryx because it is such a good tool, but it's hard to put it into a box or into a cube, if <laughs> yeah. you want to put yeah, it here. There you go. Cube, there you go. <laughs> Very nice. Um, <laughs> and so, it, you know, we put it on ourselves to figure out how to evangelize it and to help people understand its utility 
and how it's going to impact, right? And I think, you know, one of the things that I mentioned is you can either do it top down or bottom up. Either you can either be the empire and say this is how we're going to do it, or you could be the rebel alliance and kind of, <laughs> you know, infiltrate from the bottom, right? And it's so, not even May the 4th anymore, <laughs> but you know, we're a little past that, but I'm good at that. I, I, I'm I love the, I love the <laughs> analogy. There we go. But, you know, I, I think one of the ways that we're going about it is, you know, influencing from the bottom, right? Improving the workflow of everybody that touches the data, right? And having them understand like, this is what we're capable of now. Like, this is how we're going about it. And one of the philosophies that we live by is evolve because the right way to do something hasn't been discovered yet. And so we're constantly Love pushing that. ourselves to evolve and be better and push the boundaries and not stay stuck in our ways. And that's the only way to survive. Yeah. I think what he's really pointing out is this opportunity for um, professional growth that we talk a lot about as well, right? Which is to say it's a technology that helps with outcomes that drives automation, efficiency, and growth, but also what it can mean for you as an individual in your own professional growth and experience. You're tapping into that by pointing you know, out to people, like, you know, what can you unlock for us as a company? People want to be a part of the company mission and being a part of something bigger than themselves, and this is a way to do that. But it's also, it's having impact on your organization, but also having impact in your job to make your hours maybe less. Yeah, because, yeah. And then you can spend more time on your guitar. Work-life balance. Or, I mean, you, or right? your kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. last question to both of you. I'm sure, sure there's a lot of viewers out there saying, okay, I want to plug in more analytics into, into my organization. What is your advice and for, for people at the very beginning of the journey, but also those that are a little more mature yeah. and looking to scale? So Cliff, why don't you start? With first. Your Customers you? first. <laughs> exactly. oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> I think people don't, people, hmm. I do think people sometimes that aren't in the day-to-day -day with data are afraid of it. Like they think that it is something that will mess with their intuition. But you know, they use data throughout their whole life. They just don't know it, right? People don't go to a restaurant just because a sign looks nice. People will look at a rating. People won't go to movies just because a poster looks nice. They'll look at the ratings. People will walk outside and think, I need a jacket. That's data. All that stuff is input that you're receiving and then you make a decision that's based on that. And so I think helping your team, helping your customers, helping your executives, helping everybody understand that what you have is the customer telling you something. It's telling you whether I want this on the website, I want this product, I want this to change, I, this will help me grow. And using that to help them move forward is going to help you move forward. Yeah. Fantastic. I think from my perspective, it's about community. Uh, one of the things that we hear positive feedback on from Inspire is that companies and customers and people just want to connect and learn from one another, share best practices. Where are you in your journey? What, what, can you, what tip can you give me that I don't know that I can you know, put into practice? And beyond Inspire, we also have the Alteryx community, which is uh, 650,000 people strong. And whether you're just getting started and you want a starter kit or you want some you know, basic training or whether you're one of our ACE most advanced uh, types of users you can go and work on complex problems together. So for me, it's about, about community and plugging into that we're all in this world together. Data is an opportunity for all of us and it's a team sport. We can, we can learn from one another, we can grow together and uh, go do amazing things as a community. Great insights. Paula and Cliff, thank you both so much for coming on theCUBE. Thank really, you. A really fun conversation. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Rebecca Knight for Rob Strecce. That wraps up theCUBE's live coverage of Alteryx Expire, Inspire, Inspire. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed our coverage. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in technology, enterprise, news, and analysis.